Hello there, thank you for joining me and welcome to the Whole Brain and Healing Show. We're doing this in conjunction with Self Care Friday of the Be Well series. And for those of you joining us for the very first time, welcome to the Be Well Free Wellbeing series. I am Joy Ling from Singapore. I'm a positive hypnotherapist, also known as the Superpower Activator. I use positive psychology tools and hypnotherapy to empower people to celebrate strengths based whole brain healing. Now, our brain is the wellspring of our feelings, behavior, and experiences. Besides developing your prevalent and your character strengths, learning how to tap on all the potential of your brain unleashes your best and stronger self. Therapy can support us in feeling whole again to make unleashing our strengths into the world more compelling. So join in my conversations with experts in neuroscience, holistic living and psychotherapy in this show, Whole Brain and Healing with Joy. And please share this video with your family and friends so that we can all be well and be strong together. Here are some of the other support resources that we have available for you. It includes the Strengths and Joy podcast on Anchor FM and on Spotify. We also have a Facebook page called We Are Healthy, Well and Connected. There is also a private Facebook group, Strengths and Joy podcast. And do check out our YouTube channel, Super Pack Joy Link. We have Super Monday, Resilient Wednesday, and Self Care Friday content uh, on this page, Super Pack with Joy Method. At a, um, when we have a live show, it will be at GMT plus eight four PM Singapore Malaysia time. We also have other shows like Strengths of Joy show, um, this show, Whole Brain and Healing, and Celebrating She, she Is Strong. Now, Super Monday is where we explore how to develop your strength. So make your Monday super powered with me. Now, in this pandemic, resilience is the name of the game. So apply science-based research findings into actionable strategies that you can use and share with your family and friends to become more resilient. Let's be pandemic-proof together. Now, on Self-Care Friday, we will learn tools and techniques that we can apply for ourselves whenever we feel stress. So take responsibility for your own self-care and for those under your care. So welcome to Self-Care Friday, uh, where we use tools and techniques that we can apply to take care of ourselves whenever we feel stress. So our theme for Fridays is self-care. So I would like to invite you to take a moment to check in on yourself and get in touch with your emotions. Now, only by laboring our feelings can we get in touch with our well-being and to know if there is any unmet needs that we should be addressing. So let me share this feelings wheel with you. You can use this feeling wheel to help you to so pick a word from the outermost circle that best describe how you are feeling right now. Okay, so today we have a really special guest. It's, um, I would say, a really old friend that we've known each other for several years now, and it's so lovely to reconnect again. And uh, it's pretty cute because last week she interviewed me, and this week it's my turn to take advantage of her wisdom and her knowledge uh, for your for your benefit. So this is none other than Edie Summers, and she is the author of the Memory of Health. So let's welcome Edie. Hi, Edie. Thank you for joining in. Oops, I need to unmute you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Joy. Great to see you again. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you for joining us. And you're joining us from really quite, quite far away. So where exactly are you right now? I'm in Portland, Oregon. So, uh -huh. And I know you're in Singapore. So I know I kind of like we're on opposite ends of the the earth in a way, but we're holding space on either end of the, the earth here. <laughs> yes, and nevertheless, we are still connecting and, and, and sharing, supporting other people's well-being. So I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so Edie, let's start with uh, on a fun note. So perhaps <laughs> share with us a fun fact about yourself, something that most people doesn't know. <laughs> sure. So 
Actually, you know, your your background reminded me of a, a fun fact about myself that probably no one knows but me um, is that I'm I'm a huge fan of um, astronomy and outer space. Oh, and I'm kind of wow. a with learning anything to do with how space works, the planets, um, astrophysics, things like that. So that's, I don't know how fun that is, but it's fun for me. So <laughs> um, so a lot of times um, at night before I go to sleep, instead of looking at the news, which is not good for your mental health or your brain, I'll look at pictures of constellations on my phone or, and of course, you know, keeping an, we're going to be talking about self-care today. So in general, you, you want to have darkness as you're starting to sleep. But um, that's a fun fact about me is I, I love the universe. And my friend and I just went camping and um, we were able to see the Milky Way, which, Whoa. which is so stunning. And I, I just, I, I miss, I miss seeing it. So yeah, I, I recommend looking at the night sky and kind of reconnecting with your awe and wonder. Oh, thank you for that, sharing. That's really a great reminder because we can be so fixated with social media, our electronic products that uh, we lose sight of the wonders that's just right in front of us, like nature and the sky. Exactly, exactly. And also kind of being grateful for the darkness too, right? There's light and darkness and they're both equally um, relevant um, for our well-being, so. Yes, definitely. Thanks for sharing the fun fact, uh, Edie. So, okay, so <laughs> mythical Edie, now tell us about your book, The Memory of Health. Sure, and thanks for asking, Joy. So, The Memory of Health is kind of like the title sounds. Um, it's kind of remembering what it's like to be well. It took me 10 years to write, and it's about my experience, but also about the general experience of maybe losing your health or well-being, and then what are some of the ways that you find your way back to it? So we definitely talk about self-care in there. Um, I developed health issues and chronic fatigue after a ski accident in my early 20s. So that was quite a while ago. And, you know, I was very healthy before that. I had lots of energy and all of a sudden um, I was struggling to have energy and feel well. So my world turned upside down. So as you and I were discussing, um, you know, that was an uncertain time for me. And I had to learn a lot. I had to learn a lot about self care, how to, like, what well being was, even um, how to eat well, how to manage stress. And um, I had to learn a lot of tools, including mindfulness. And I know we're gonna be talking about that a little bit more, but, and I cover a lot of that in my book as well as different theories of chronic fatigue and also even what's known as chronic fatigue syndrome. So it's it's kind of a resource and guide to living well. And, um, and that was, again, my uncertain time. And again, I know we're facing a new uncertain time now. Um, there are a lot of, actually a lot of people that have COVID-19, a lot of people are developing chronic fatigue symptoms um and also of course in general people that have experienced trauma and i think in general in the world we're experiencing you know kind of a mass trauma now um that you know um that can also lead to burnout and that can create feelings of chronic fatigue as well so um it was you know it again it took me 10 years to write and um but i wanted to kind of um record all the research that I found on ways to feel better. Um, so there's a lot of research in it, but I try to make it very user friendly. And we def I definitely talk about self care in there. <laughs> Beautiful. So uh, perhaps tell us more about chronic uh, fatigue um, since uh, I, I, I personally don't know that much about it, um, except, you know, like looking at the word chronic fatigue. Okay, so some kind of persistent. Uh, lethargy or tiredness, I presume. Mm -hmm. So, from what, uh, from based on your sharing, which uh, actually is the first time I'm hearing it, uh, the the background to how you um, end up having chronic fatigue. So, mm -hmm. it seems to me like it was quite sudden. It wasn't gradual for you. It, I think, yeah, and that's the thing is. So, those are that's a really great question. So, I want to clarify that chronic fatigue is a symptom, and it can occur because of different reasons. It could be because of 
severe stress, like a sudden trauma, say like a car accident or a divorce, or it could also be from ongoing stress. So, and you can burn out from that. Let's say if you're feeling stressed out a lot for a long time, that can make you feel burned out and burned out and chronically fatigued. Um, and there's also something known as CFS or ME if you're in the UK. And chronic fatigue syndrome or CFS, um, we're still trying to learn exactly what causes that. But, and that is a little bit more complicated and involved. But again, chronic fatigue is a symptom and there are many different causes for it. So it could be from stress, severe or, um, or short-term stress, or it could be from, um, say maybe you have chronic fatigue syndrome, or it could be from um, maybe people who have lupus or fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis. So there are a lot of different reasons that people develop chronic fatigue, but I would say mm -hmm. in general, and even this even applies to people with chronic fatigue syndrome, I believe, is that when you have ongoing stress or sudden stress that kind of um, throws your stress system out of balance, your body out of balance, um, over time, your system will potentially develop chronic fatigue as a way to slow yourself down. Um, and it's, it's almost like a protective mechanism, but the problem is that sometimes our bodies don't know how to move out of that state where we're feeling chronically mm. fatigued. Our body might get stuck in chronic fatigue. So again, we're still learning um, all the different causes for especially chronic fatigue syndrome, but chronic fatigue is becoming more and more common these days because of trauma, ongoing stress, um, or even, even a, a short-term stress, like having an illness, um, or maybe being in a car accident or going through a divorce, something like that. Um, so it's a, it's a big subject, but um, it's, it's becoming more and more common. So, and it's, it's probably the main reason that people go to see their doctor is because they're feeling tired and exha mm. exhausted, really. So um, there are a lot of different levels to it and different theories about what causes it. And I explore a lot of that in my book. Um, but thankfully, self-care goes a long way. Mindfulness goes a long way. There's a lot that you can do to help yourself. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really mindfulness. I really learned about it in a practical way. I mean, mindfulness has Bud Buddhist roots, but in a very practical way, and I know we're going to be talking about this, it really helps you slow down and get more in tune and in touch with what your body's saying to you through your symptoms. And again, a symptom could be chronic fatigue, maybe why you're not feeling feeling as as good as you would like to. So it's a long it's a long answer, but. <laughs> So it sounds like uh, indeed that mindfulness has played a big part in uh, your self-healing journey. Uh, of course, along with many other tools that, as you mentioned earlier, you had to learn how to have self-care, which, uh, which is one of the things I find sad. Uh, we are not taught this in schools, and these are really crucial life skills, mindfulness, um, just you know, simple things like breathing technique, um, but we kind of, we are fixated with more academic pursuits um, rather than having academic pursuits and uh, life skills going um, side by side. So uh, because of what happened, you had to learn about mindfulness. So share with us why is mindfulness an important part of self-care? So that's a great question. And I think it's important because and we're again, um, it does really help your body and brain to start to heal on a very practical level. Um, there are many different ways to talk about mindfulness, but in terms of self care, it's a really practical tool. Um, it helps you de stress, it can help reduce anxiety, um, it can help your brain feel calmer, it can help you feel more focused. Um, it can help your body get more into the what's known as the relaxation response so that you can um, so that your body can literally start to heal because if we're in a constant state of stress, um, more the the worry part of our brain is taking over the amygdala. more of the primitive part of our brain is taking over. Um, and it's sort of a self-perpetuating cycle. 
So the more that we can be conscious of what's happening and the more that we can really check in, which uh, in a practical way, mindfulness can help you to do that, to be more present with yourself and your body. And the more we can do that, the more that we can diminish feelings of anxiety and stress. And that's a really practical, simple way to practice self-care is by practicing mindfulness. So again, it's a, those are both really big topics, but I would say in a very simple way, it's a tool that you can use to de-stress and to lower anxiety so that you can feel more present and clear um, and, and feel more joyful and have less fear. Mm. So <laughs> when I started meditation recently or simply just making more time for myself, um, uh, you know, time out, me time. And um, that the one of the interesting things that happened after that was I was starting to be more aware of my state, my state in any moment. Um, so the last six months been really busy uh, with steep learning curve, how to do Facebook Live and videos and all that, something yeah. that I've avoided all my life. So it was uh, very challenging. Uh, that's an understatement. So... But so and yeah and and we do in a big way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, it's a crucial skill that I'm grateful that I I have right now but the, yeah. the the learning curve was steep and it gave me a lot of stress actually in the whole process mm. so now that I'm stepping a bit uh, taking a step back and, and taking time for myself a bit more time uh, for change um the interesting thing that happened from it was I was starting to be more aware of my present moment state at any any moment in general um, yeah. but because of that uh, when I'm starting to feel stress maybe because oh okay so these are the things I need to do these are all the deadlines I I can feel it more acutely when mm -hmm. I actually don't feel it that much because I was like you mentioned in perpetual fight or flight state so I actually mm -hmm. don't feel it when there's more stress because I was already in that state. So in the mm -hmm. beginning, it was a bit of a shocker because I was feeling it so acutely and I felt like I really felt very uncomfortable and mm -hmm. I had to um, find ways, to, okay, how can I do this quickly and how can I do this uh, in the most efficient ways because I was anxious, <laughs> I was eager to get rid of this stress that I was starting to feel so visibly, which I was not yeah. feeling for a while because I was just perpetually in that level so that was a very interesting observation i i had and because of that i decided okay it's better to have some daily practice to manage this stress because now i'm in a different state even though it's in a moment to feel those stress so acutely is not ple uh, pleasant mm -hmm. however i think in general this is a, a, a better and safer space to live your life rather than in that perpetual stress state Definitely. And I enjoy when you when you mentioned that it, it, it reminded me that when you said six months, you know, six months is pretty much when COVID-19 came out. I mean, yes. I mean, it was it was earlier than that, but I think it sort of reached a crescendo around that. Yes. Think, the lockdown is around there. Yes. Yeah. And so I think in general, anxiety and stress started to rise, you know, for everybody. Yes. And I think it took us several months to realize, wait a second, I'm in a constant st state of stress and anxiety. And obviously that doesn't feel good. Mm. So, you know, now that we're hopefully starting to come down from that to some degree, you know, we can practice more mindfulness and awareness. Mindfulness really just means being present in a, you know, in a very simple way. And, you know, you can really start to check in more and, and ask yourself, you know, like, how am I feeling? How would I like to feel? And maybe is there a different way that I can go about my day? You know, um, despite everything that is still going on. <laughs> yes, uh, that's why we always start a self-care Friday with the feeling we're introducing people to this simple tool where you can check in and try to be accurate and label your feelings. There's a lot of power in laboring your feelings. Then you might be like, oh, I didn't know I'm feeling angry, right? And you can do something about it because you now have the first piece, which is self-awareness. Absolutely. And that made me mindful. I loved when you had that wheel up. And for me, I saw joyful and that's what I gravitated toward in the moment. But yeah, that's a great mindful way to check in. So that was fantastic. Indeed. So um, how would someone know that they need to be uh, more mindful? Uh, what, what are the telltale signs for someone to, to 
to to it to encourage them to start working towards practicing mindfulness yeah so that's another great question so some of them are like one of them would be feeling checked out if you're starting to feel like you know, not feeling present, you know, that can, that can feel like being checked out, or maybe your, your mind is going a million miles an hour, or you're, you have, you're juggling all these things, but you don't feel like you're able to focus on just one thing. Um, there are many ways that you, you might start to, um, you could pinpoint that would say that you're not being mindful, but being checked out, I think is, I mean, it's kind of the opposite of being present, right? So for me, that's one of the major telltale signs, however, and I don't quote me on this, I think it's Eckhart Tolle that says this, but I think it's him that if, but you can be mindful just by checking in with yourself. So you, you become not checked out just by checking in. So that one alone is um, my favorite way of kind of, it's like a dual remembrance, right? Like, oh, I remember that I'm feeling checked out, but then all of a sudden you're checked in because you are aware that you're checked out, <laughs> you know? So that that's one right there. Um, I think for me, stress is another one. If we, and again, if we start to notice stress and anxiety levels going up, then we might be letting more of the, the fear based part of our brain, again, our primitive brain, our amygdala kind of take over. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's kind of normal in a way. But the, the great thing about mindfulness is that we have the opportunity to be present. We have the opportunity to harness different parts of our brain, including the executive function. The more we practice mindfulness, the more that we can harness, we can kind of tame the amygdala, the fear-based part of our brain, and activate the the um the newer part of our brain the what's called the executive part of your brain so i would say if you feel fear or anxiety like a lot of it um it's possible that you might be um that's like another sign that's more of a personal sign for me but i i do know that a telltale sign i think that's based on science is feeling checked out and there are more than that but that's the one that i'm remembering in the moment so if you feel checked out, just check in and then you're being mindful, so. <laughs> mm. So uh, what is the relationship between mindfulness and brain health? And brain health, so, and again, we were, I, we were kind of touching on that a little bit. So um, mindfulness, and we'll get into this mindfulness meditation, the meditation part of it, but mindfulness can um, not only create what's called neuroplasticity, it can help you be more resilient, which you were talking about earlier, which is really, really helpful. But also, it can also improve what's called neuroplasticity. So um, it can help you develop um, a more calm brain. So again, by calming down the amygdala, even shrinking it, that's going to naturally help other parts of your brain where you can make better decisions. Um, and also feel more emotionally stable and less reactive, which is huge um, because again, the more your stress and anxiety go up, the more emotionally reactive you might feel. So in terms of brain health, I would say the big one is that it tames the stress response and it allows you to feel more calm. You can make better decisions. You can feel um, less emotionally reactive and even start to tap into feeling good, feeling joyful, being more present, noticing what's right in front of you, instead of being worried about what's gonna happen, what has happened, if that makes sense. So in terms of the brain, it really calms and tames the stress response in your, in your brain. So, and it allows other functions to take over, like the executive function. Um, which is is kind of like our more um, rational mind. And so, and there's, again, there's a lot that we can go into on those topics, but I would say in terms of brain health, um, it creates neuroplasticity, which kind of helps your brain be more resilient and it helps you calm down and be more present, which is makes you more mindful. And then you can get stuff done and not feel as worried, you know, and feel more joyful as you're going about your day. <laughs> well, more joyful is always good. <laughs> I'll keep coming back to joy because your name is Joy, so I can't. I can't <laughs> <help. laughs> 
So for uh, people who doesn't understand uh, neuroplasticity, maybe you can share a little bit what exactly that means. Sure. So neuroplasticity, even though it has the word plastic in it, which to me, I always thought it sounded a little strange. What it basically means is that your brain can change and it can even adapt. So let's say if you have an injury, other parts of your brain will take over, which is kind of amazing. Um, but in terms of resilience and adapting, um, your brain is always learning and it can learn new skills and new habits. It can create new neural pathways. They used to think that this was something that only happened up to a certain point, but now we understand that um, your brain is always changing. It's adapting. That's what they mean by the plastic part is that your brain can change and adapt. And that's really good news because that means that you have a lot of control over how you feel, how your brain actually works and how it functions. Um, so that's kind of neuroplasticity in a nutshell. And mindfulness can really help kind of create new neural pathways, especially mindfulness meditation, which I know we're going to be talking about in a little bit. It's a really, really simple way of actually um, creating new neural pathways in your brain to help you feel calmer and less stressed and be more resilient. So, but neuroplasticity means your brain can change. Yes, um, I always feel very excited about this. Um, yeah. The fact that we can learn and we can install new neural pathways at any time in our life, any age. I think this is very exciting news and it's, it gives people hope meaning yeah. that it's never too late to start something to learn mindfulness to practice um you know self-care skills it, it it doesn't have to be like oh you never learn it when you're young and then that's it you're dumb uh, that's not true you can learn it at any time and the great news is mm -hmm. self-care skills is something that you not just learn but you can share and teach other people as well so i, I think that this is what makes a self-care in uncertain time, still something that uh, is very hopeful and still can be done entirely possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's always hope and there's so much that we have control over. I mean, most, most things in life we have control over, not every single thing, obviously, but in terms of our own well-being, um, we have so much more control than we think we do. Um, and there's so many tools at our disposal and you know, self-care is a, in a, it's an umbrella term, you know, so we can put mindfulness in it. We can put mm -hmm. meditation in it. We can put stress management in it, exercise. Um, the list goes on and on. Sleep, sleep is really important. And yeah, there, so even, especially when it's difficult times, especially that's when it's the most important to practice even more self-care. And I learned that from having health challenges and it's still something that I practice to this day. If I start to feel stressed out, I, I practice more me time, like you were saying earlier. <laughs> kind of fill yeah. up your bucket, fill up your bucket again, fill up, <laughs> fill it up. Yeah. So, well, I guess this is a perfect time for EV to share with us some crucial life skills in self-care. So tell us about this mindfulness meditation. Okay, so I learned about mindfulness meditation in grad school. I took a course on mindfulness and it was one of my favorite courses in there and I was just mesmerized. Um, now, of course, mindfulness again has Buddhist roots and they did cover that in the book at first and I was learning all about mindfulness and then they got to mindfulness meditation and I was like, this is like the best tool ever because it's so easy, so simple. Um, you can do it just for a couple seconds or a couple minutes. Um, so. So all you do is focus on your breath and you want to bring your attention, meaning your, your mind and your brain back to your breath. Anytime you feel it start to wander, mindfulness meditation is a meditation that focuses on your breath. And this is what's so beautiful about it. And so simple. This is what helped me to meditate without being afraid of it or confused by it. Um, so all you do, so if everyone, if you just want to close your eyes and just notice your breath, just find your breath. It's going to be around your belly. <laughs> um, if you find yourself taking shorter breaths, let yourself breathe from your belly. 
just find your breath and you're just gonna keep your attention on your breath this is mindfulness meditation right here if you happen to notice that your attention or your mind starts wandering off and thinking about something else don't judge yourself don't judge your mind or your brain. Just gently bring your awareness and focus back to your breath and notice your belly rising and falling. You can do this to start off just for a couple of seconds. And then over time, you can build up to a couple of minutes. You can do it before you go to bed or any time that you're feeling stressed. Breathing is a great way to also slow down the stress response and help your brain calm down. And mindfulness meditation is not only a meditation, but it helps you focus on your breath and breathing. So the two are beautifully combined. Um, and the goal of meditation, at least in the beginning, is to help you focus. And mindfulness meditation gives you a focal point. It's your breath. So that's, that's mindfulness meditation in a nutshell. And I found it incredibly helpful. I still use it to this day. And for me, it was an aha moment because I found meditation very um, kind of elusive before that. And this gave me something to focus on. So, and you know, everyone's different in terms of what may work for them, but also, it, like I said, it calms you down and mindfulness meditation can help your brain calm down, which again can create that better focus and even starting to build those different neural pathways. Sometimes I'll use it if I'm noticing a negative thought happening, you know, like that negative thought spiral. Mindfulness meditation, just empty your mind and bring your focus to your breath. And that will literally start to rewire your brain and over time, you'll notice that you have more positive thoughts as well, and you can start to kind of train your brain to think more positively through mindfulness meditation as well. So <laughs> mm. I hope hopefully that helps. And um, again, I know that's it's a big topic, but that's a really simple way of, I'm hoping that, that some people that are participating and listening had a sense of relief and maybe feeling a little bit calmer and more present and <laughs> yeah so simple but uh such a powerful tool to transform yourself in a matter of minutes uh exactly. technique that i have uh, learned uh, before is that uh, if your thoughts uh if you're starting to have thoughts or your mind is starting to wander during the breathing you can just label it uh, um, mm. and just say oh thinking and then come back oh, to the yeah. present moment and then when you're, you when you have thoughts again and then you just go oh thinking and come back again i thought that's quite cute Ooh. um i did okay. try it um once or twice i don't always do that i, I just acknowledge that i'm, I'm thinking but i don't <laughs> kind of say it in my mind but uh, apparently like that might be a technique that might be useful i thought that's quite oh, cute that's like oh thinking and then just um, just saying it kind of already activate the response to come back to the present moment. I Absolutely. think that in and of itself, if you do it often enough, it's already a new uh, neural pathway so that in your waking hours, when you're not meditating, you might be able to do that. Like when you're supposed to be uh, concentrating, but you drift away, it, it can overlap. The habit can overlap and you can literally say to yourself, oh, I'm thinking, come back, right? So, I love it. Boy, I think that's really powerful. And, and it also makes you mindful, right? Because it, yes. again, so, oh, and that reminds me. So another sign that you're not mindful is if you're overthinking. So you just reminded me. So, you know, you can, if you notice, so, so saying thinking to yourself makes you present again and kind of takes you out of that overthinking state. So, <laughs> I love that. I think it's powerful to say it. I think it's powerful to say it. Yes, I, but I also want to highlight that the way you say it is important. Like you're just saying it in a very neutral mm. way, in in just stating a, a fact that okay, I, I'm I'm thinking right. So it's like oh, thinking, and then come back, and not like you know, oh, thinking. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be like no that would judgment. Be, no judgment. <laughs> right, which is part of mindfulness too. In the Buddhist sense, is 
is don't be attached to what you're doing. Don't be attached. Um, no, don't judge yourself. And I like that kind of be neutral about what's happening. I like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I thought that that is a, a cute tip that I can share what I think like or oh, some well-known monk that shared that. And I thought that was very interesting. I personally yeah. use this app called Insight Timer. Um, oh, yeah. They have lots of stuff that there's music, there's singing bowls, there's um, um, guided meditation, and there's even a timer. Like if you're doing yoga or qigong, you can time yourself. You can there's like you can set like a, a, a gong sound at the beginning and the end. So, you know, you can keep your eyes closed and the, the gong sound will indicate to you that all oh, your session is over. So I find the Insight app very useful. There's also many other apps out there that people are using, but I, I'm quite used to Insight app, so I'm sticking to it. So mm -hmm. I think mindfulness um, probably is really just a decision at the end of the day. Are you going to take mm -hmm. care? Are you going to make it a priority to take care of yourself? Um, are you going to make time to do something simple but uh, important for yourself um, basing on my own experience I think it really boils down to that it's really not about the technique the techniques tend to be very simple for meditation mm -hmm. um, maybe it's really a, more about the decision are you going to make the decision to take care of yourself yeah absolutely and something I've learned also in research is giving yourself permission you know um, sometimes if we feel um, pulled by work or kids or partners, we may not give ourselves permission to take care of ourselves. So absolutely. Well, that's a huge, huge piece. Uh, that definitely a, a big one for me. Like there's always, oh, there's too much work. I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow. Um, so I think that permission is a big, big piece. Like giving yourself permission for self-care that it, it's okay mm -hmm. to make time to take care of yourself. The world can wait. Uh, and um, yeah. I think to a certain well, extent, your work can wait as well. You need to. Um, so this could be a fun. This is a fun short sharing, like in the beginning. Um, so mm -hmm. I've been doing alternate nostril breathing, like na, oh, yeah. um, Nandi Shohana for maybe like a month now. Yeah. But in the beginning, it was very difficult. So mm -hmm. um, my Ayurveda teacher was saying, okay, this is like the mother of all breathing technique. And mm -hmm. I love uh, mm -hmm. I love alternate nostril breathing for a long time. And I always wanted to go back to it. So when she said that, I got excited. I'm like, wow, the, you know, it's the breathing technique. <laughs> so, but, you know, like the mind was, I mean, the intention was there, but I just never got around to it because I was like, you know, so anxious to start my day and I keep thinking on my to-do list and like it never happened. And at some point I decided, okay, I need to do something about it. Like I want to do this every day and it's not happening. So then the, I did something very simple. Uh, so I, I noticed that my anxiety begins the moment I brush my teeth. My mind goes straight to like, okay, this is my to-do list. And mm -hmm. that's that's the sense of anxiety that, that stops me from taking a moment to do some breathing before I start my day. It's this anxiety. So when I start having mm -hmm. that awareness, I decided that, okay, let's say something went. I noticed that anxiety point every morning when I brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. So then the next day, when it happened again, I'm starting to sense the anxiety again. So I know, okay, the breathing not going to happen because the anxiety has taken over. Mm -hmm. I stop and I said to myself, I said, I said, uh, Joy, you can breathe first before you take care of yes. others. And yeah. because that oh, sentence wow. is so reasonable, my mind stopped. It, it was like a break point. Wow. It, it, it break my anxiety thoughts because I said, um, let me breathe first before I take care of others. You, you can't argue with a sentence like that uh, somehow it works so for a few days when I was brushing my teeth and I'm feeling the anxiety again so it's almost like the anxiety when I brush my teeth it's almost like a habit loop so it's all quite shocking mm -hmm. but I broke the right. habit with a new habit I was like experimenting with myself so I, I feeling it again and there was a cue for me when I feel it again and I say this to myself I can take time to breathe first before I take care of others and so that was just an indication that I'm going to do my alternate nostril breathing. And, and it works. I no longer feel like the need to rush out of the bedroom and start doing my... I'm like, I can, I can breathe first before I do whatever I need to do. It's such a simple and yeah. harmless sentence and it, it helped me. So most self-care technique is really so simple.
So simple. And like you said, it, it, you know, we have to change our habit around it because we get used to doing things a certain way. Even stress can become a habit. So I love how you say breathe first, you know, um, that's brilliant. You know, if we can, um, it's almost like putting on your oxygen mask first, right? Yeah. Yes. Like we, and breath is, is so critical to life. Um, and if we can start our day with a calm mind versus, versus an anxious mind, it's going to be a much better day, you know? And so we're going to enjoy it much, much more. So I love that. Breathe first. What a great cue for your mind. Because I'm thinking normally how we talk and it's also languaging is so important. And I guess yeah. I'm just taking advantage of my, my NLP training as well. Usually we'll say like, I must do alternate nostril breathing first or I must breathe first. before then Because it's mass and then, then the brain starts be becoming argumentative. But this is very important and we have to do this today, right? But I wasn't using word like shoot and mass. I was just saying mm -hmm. uh, sentence is very reasonable and makes sense if i don't breathe how can i do anything at all right so i said let me breathe first but i was referring to like i want to do this alternate nostril breathing let me breathe first before i take care of others and basically though that's the work that i do isn't it like it's about empowering others taking care of others so i said but let me breathe first like the, the, your mind no matter how argumentative cannot argue with a sentence like that so i guess exactly. like having fun and uh um, find a sentence that works for you and also be aware what is the stress point when you are feeling that stress again mindfulness comes in if you are not mindful you, you might not even know when the stress comes in because you're just perpetually at that stress level but because I was mm -hmm. aware I was doing mindfulness and um, breathing technique I was starting to notice uh, myself I, I guess self-awareness and noticing and again we're going back to mindfulness mindfulness help you to be aware of yourself right so it's like a, you, you can't yeah. run away from it you have to do mindfulness that's the key to everything else Mind and mindfulness is like a for me it's like a safe space I mean it's very dynamic um but it's a safe space I mean it's the it's the present moment and um it's, I know that for some people it might, you know, the present moment may not feel safe, but we can make it safe. We can make it safe, especially in our own environment. And that's when, that's where the magic happens when you're in the present moment. So, you know, and we're living, breathing beings. So yeah, we have to take care of ourselves. It's, it's critical. It, it should be like brushing our teeth <laughs> to come full what? circle, to come full circle. <laughs> I love uh, what you said, like we are living and breathing beings and we need yeah. to take care of ourselves. I think that's a beautiful statement. So simple, but so profound. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Joy. Well, you know, it's, I mean, I think having health challenges made me wake up to that. You know, it makes you so much more aware of your body, you know. Um, so I think we're all becoming more aware of the planet and our bodies and our interactions with one another. Um, and, you know, and we have the opportunity to kind of slow down and become more present and be there more for ourselves and, and one another and the planet as well. So mm. <laughs> it's, it's all, it's all real and, you know, it requires, <laughs> um, it requires presence and love and gratitude and breath and sleep. <laughs> I know we're going to be talking about, I'm going to be mentioning sleep at, when you, when we talk about self-care okay. more. Yeah. So again, yeah, it's coming down to earth. I think, you know, as much as I love the heavens and, you know, I'm, a, I'm obsessed. And the astrology. <laughs> it's, coming down, it's coming down to earth. I think we're living in a time where we're really becoming more and more aware and more and more present, you know, as things unfold. It's a huge opportunity for us, really. <laughs> Thank you, Edie, for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge with us. I've also uh, learned a lot from you. I've enjoyed our conversation. So I think at this point, uh, it's a great time for me to share our upcoming course, uh, Being Your Strongest Self. So besides self-care, we also can look into developing mm -hmm. our character strengths and also uh, look into a positive psychology framework for well-being. So this is a short two minutes video to share with you about this cause, The Strongest Cell.
I love that video, Joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it too. It's, it's yeah. so cheerful, such a cheerful video, and I like the music. It's so chippy. Yeah, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> I love it. <laughs> love that. Okay, so before Edie share her final self care tip with us, I'd like to make a few announcements and to share a free upcoming event as well. This is a women empowerment event. So I'm going to share this banner right now. So come and uh, join us for this women empowerment event and activate the wonder woman in you so this is uh, there is a free preview on the 21st and the 30th of september um, so you can look out for this link um, go to uh, ctsolutionsglobal.com slash woman empowerment to sign up uh, i will share it in the comment tab as well and uh, so besides this uh, woman empowerment event we also have of course my free guide, my free report to how to be your strongest self during this pandemic. What are the 10 things that you still can absolutely do in this pandemic to activate your strongest self? And for another woman empowerment event, we also have an upcoming Body Mind Spirit Festival for She. Uh, this is organized by the She Network, uh, ERM Marketing, and So Wando, and the Women Wellness Network. And this is a fundraising event for a cause that is very close to women's heart. Uh, we will announce more information soon. It's a two days online summit with um, activate with uh, workshops, and uh, we have uh, speakers. Uh, we have uh, different topics that's related to nourishing your body, mind, and spirit. So lots of free stuff and very affordable support resources for you. So do stay tuned. That's amazing. You're doing so many amazing things, Joy. <laughs> incredible, really. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So Edie, what is your final self-care tip for all of us? <laughs> well, I kind of gave it away, um, but I want to talk about sleep because people are having trouble sleeping too. So, and it's a huge self-care tip because it's gonna make everything else run better, including your brain. It will make your brain uh, feel better. It will um, reduce your fatigue. Um, so sleep is critical. And I know people are having trouble. There are a lot of different um, reasons people are having trouble sleeping. But um, again, some really quick tips are, um, you wanna minimize blue light at night. So even though I was talking about being on my phone, looking at the galaxies at nighttime, you don't wanna look at your phone, <laughs> you know, right before you go to sleep. Um, give, your, give your brain a chance to build melatonin. Um, and also, you know, there's, um, these are called, this is called sleep hygiene. You wanna sleep in a darkened room as much as possible. Um, also turn your phone onto airplane mode. Um, so that your body isn't disrupted by the electronics of, the, of your phone. Um, sleep is is the best way to um, kind of kind of give yourself more energy. You're gonna build your energy reserves up with the deeper sleep that you get. Um, so, and of course, during the day, if you man if you manage your stress levels, whether it's through mindfulness meditation or anything that works for you, um, your you're going to sleep deeper as well. So there are so many different ways to sleep better. Um, I use some, I use certain sleep supplements too. Um, Valerian's really good. GABA, Pharma GABA can be really good. Um, but in terms of brain health and sleep and self care and sleep, sleep is my number one tip because it's the foundation of everything else. And, um, even if, so this is good to know that if you're feeling anxious about sleeping, you keep telling yourself, I'm not sleeping, um, your brain is still recovering to some extent. If you're lying in darkness and, you know, just letting yourself relax and not think, even if you don't think that you're sleeping, your brain is still going to recover to some extent. So give yourself the time, um, eight hours in the darkness, lie down, relax and let that be your most sacred self-care time um, and try to relax um, try to empty your mind if you have to focus on your breath or anything that gives you that peace of mind um, it's it's worth it sleep is worth it and it can get better over time so you know even if you're having sleep issues it does get better over time keep prioritizing it and remember that what you're doing during the day even in terms of getting early sunlight 
you know, um, that can help you sleep better at night. So you want light during the day and you want darkness at night. Um, so try not to confuse your brain by mixing up the two. Um, light during the day, darkness at night, keep your stress levels down, eat well, and um, try to relax about it too. And try not to worry whether or not you're sleeping or not. <laughs> and it will create a foundation for your well being in general. <laughs> thank you, Edie, for coming on the show. And thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, there are so many tips right. that you have so generously shared. I think that it's really up to you now whether you are going to take responsibility for your own self care. So I hope you have enjoyed our show and found our chat uh, beneficial. Uh, feel free to share which uh, tip they're going to use to support yourself, your own self-care this week. So thank you, Eddie. So let's um, end this show on a high note with <laughs> our super yeah. powerful. Awesome. <laughs> 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 I feel like Wonder Woman. I've always wanted to be Wonder Woman. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching, everyone. Take care yeah, and have you. a blessed weekend. Okay. Bye. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Take care. See you soon. Bye.